Hello, my name is Adrian and welcome to a highly requested video on my channel. We've already taken an extensive look at CW's Arrow and the DC Extended Universe Batman, and if you haven't seen those yet, you can access them right on the annotation above or the link in the description below. I go through each one of their various fighting styles and explain the history behind them as well. Now, the interesting thing here is that we have two fully fleshed out fighters, so I can do a pretty accurate assessment of how they would behave in battle. To preface this, let's assume for a moment that Batman doesn't know that Green Arrow is about to get the drop on him. It's been said that Batman can beat virtually anybody given enough time to plan, and from what I've read in the comics and seen in the animated films and live action movies, I tend to agree. So to even the playing field, Season 5 CW Arrow, or in other words, a fully trained and well experienced Arrow who doesn't see a problem with killing, has found a way to your Batman from the DCEU, or in other words, the Batman you've seen in Batman vs Superman Suicide Squad and the upcoming Justice League film into an empty warehouse. I say empty warehouse because I'm also going to go ahead and rule out environmental damage in this battle. No grabbing a just out of reach hook or reaching for a switch that causes a roof to cave in. Just a good old hand to hand fight. And to make things fun, we're going to switch the voiceover to a first person narrator so you'll get to hear what's going on in Batman's mind to make the fight that much more engaging. So in other words, this is an experiment, an educational video in which you're about to hear a what if analytical battle between CW's Arrow and DCEU's Batman and get a chance to learn how their different fighting styles would clash. I know something is wrong the moment I step out of the Batmobile, but I have no choice. Victor Zaz escaped from Arkham and claimed his latest victim just a few hours ago. And conveniently enough, I got an encrypted message delivered to the back computer by an informant claiming to know his whereabouts. He gave me enough evidence to convince me he was genuine, but this place is putting me on edge. An abandoned warehouse stands in front of me. I've visited enough of these to last three lifetimes. Nine times out of ten, there's an army of thugs waiting to have their jaws broken. But I need to verify every lead I can get. And right now, this is all I've got. I step into the warehouse and check the roof. Nothing in sight. I take a couple more steps and in a split second my doubts are all but confirmed. It was distant, and it was near perceptible to an untrained ear, but I heard the distinct twang of an arrow being released from a bow and the soft exhale from an experienced shooter. There are two ways this could play out. The first is that the arrow has a direct impact with my cowl, and if this were to happen it still wouldn't benefit my attacker. My cowl is equipped with a titanium understructure. It's impervious to knives, bullets, and arrows. Alfred was kind enough to verify that last one and he was just as relieved as I was when it worked. The second is for me to turn around and catch said arrow and throw a batarang to quickly knock the weapon out of this assailant's hands. I choose a ladder as I want to relieve this man of his primary weapon. As I do this, I see the hooded green figure leap from a beam that had been disguised by a torn sheet and land on the ground. He slowly gets up and as he makes his way to his bow it blows up, courtesy of my detonating batarang. I crack the arrow in half. He's clearly not very happy about losing his equipment. Where's Felicity? The man says. I don't know who you're talking about, I respond. But I think you've been set up. I'm not whoever you think I am. You're lying. You have failed this city, he says. As he comes towards me, I study his movement. He's clearly highly trained, but doesn't seem to be acting like himself. I've never seen this man dressed in green before, but I've seen those eyes before, and those eyes aren't open to reasoning. Right now, my options are to use my grappling gun to get a better vantage point, or even use it on him, but he reminds me of Robin and I can't bring myself to do it. I could probably throw a smoke bomb right here and now and disorient him enough for me to land a decisive blow, but I decide to take him head on. Maybe I'll get some information out of him that way. Why did he lure me here? Where does he come from? I'm lost in my thoughts for a moment too long, I barely see him vault himself up in the air and drop kick me four feet across a warehouse. He's much younger than me, faster, and I count my lucky stars that he didn't break a rib with that technique. I barely get up and he's right next to me, delivering a series of rapid fire punches extremely reminiscent from Kali. As I'm blocking his hits, I take advantage of his close proximity and headbutt him. He clearly has not been hit by titanium before, and in his days, I follow up with a strong push kick to gain some distance from him. He's still not all there, so I deliver a strong right roundhouse, my preferred kick for disabling thugs. Surprisingly, he is still holding strong, so I dive for his arm in order to flip him over my body. But to my surprise, a young man reads my movement and flips over me with an impressive technique from the Russian martial arts Lombo. I land straight on my back, feel a sharp pain jolt through my shoulder. I thankfully still have full control over it, but I'm now in a disastrous position. This hooded individual is clearly well versed in ground combat, and if I give him a moment too long, he will kill me down here. I know ground combat, but this guy lives it. I need to get back up. I block his assault of hooks, and once I see him throw a haymaker that is just a bit too strong, it gives me an extra second I need to throw an upward elbow right into his jaw, courtesy of my background in Muay Thai. It does the trick of making him recoil in pain, giving me that time to stand back up. Who are you? Why are you here? 
I managed to say out loud. I'm the Green Arrow, and you've taken someone very important to me, he replies. I've never even met you, I say. Then a version of you has, he sternly states. And then it hits me. This man proves a multiverse theory. I never thought that this would be a reality. But why would I do that? Is he even operating off of proven intelligence? What are his sources? A million questions pop into my head, but before I have a chance to ask him any of it, he comes right back at me with a solid punch to the gut. I proceed to trade blows with him and he doesn't show much background in boxing, but I see his background in Kali and start to see traces of Wing Chun as well in his technique, deflecting and diminishing the power behind each one of my punches. I drop the boxing style and immediately switch to my own background in Kung Fu to match his upper body work. I throw in a quick high roundhouse, but he traps it with a spinning hook of his own, a technique I've seen in Hapkyo but haven't actually used in a fight before. His leg isn't strong enough to get the full lock in, so I'm easily able to roll out of the full hold. Up until now, things are looking dangerously even. We both have an extensive background in martial arts, both are extremely adept at using them, and I can tell that we both have faced enough adversaries giving us the techniques needed to be able to win in combat. But as we continue to fight, I finally see the weakness that I needed. This man has been hardened in life, no doubt exposed to just as much or even more tragedy than I have, but he hasn't been in it for long. His knuckles are still all perfectly intact, no previous injuries preventing him from moving at the top of his ability. He's had plenty of training, that's no question, but my gut is telling me he hasn't been doing it for long. Five, ten years tops. I've been beating up thugs, criminals, and all sorts of low-life scum for over two decades. I barely even had a childhood for that matter. I've spent enough time at the gym to be able to work out in my sleep. Sure, maybe my age has cut up to me a bit. Maybe I'm not as fast as I used to be 20 years ago. But I've still got the muscle mass edge on this guy. Each one of my hits that lands on arrow, pound for pound, will hurt a lot more. I've got the experience, training, and strength to take this guy down, and I have no more time to waste in doing so. I can tell he's getting weaker. I can tell that he's starting to get a little sloppy in his technique. A successful quick knife strike to the mastoid muscles on his neck tells me he isn't blocking as fast anymore. I know I can't go in for kicks, because he'd undoubtedly counter it with his Apkido training. I'm definitely not going to use one of my gadgets as they become a liability. I know he'll read me going to the belt before I even reach for it. I need to outthink him. It's the only way. He's tired. Angry. Vengeful, clearly not himself. All I need to do is provoke him to go in for a solid tackle. I know I'd be able to counter it. I backflip and roll to gain some distance from him. You clearly don't deserve her, I declare. You have Felicity, he yells. And he lunges right at me, just as I wanted him to, and is diving straight for the legs, just as he should. But he's much too slow at this point to land an effective impact. My judo training kicks in and I shoot my feet backwards as I place my right arm over his back and slide my left arm under his right. Before he even has a chance to react, I've already swung my right leg over his locked arm and rolled onto the ground, landing in a right arm bar. With my strength, this can result in a broken elbow joint in less time than it takes to blink. The green arrow knows he's been beaten and finally stops resisting. Time to talk. Now, take a deep breath. I know this isn't you. I will help you find Felicity in exchange for you helping me find Victor's ass. Deal? My right elbow joint says yes, he replies, so he does have a sense of humor. And there you have it! What did you think of the fight? Would you like to see another video like this one? Let me know in the comments below and feel free to leave your suggestions! The thing that ultimately decided this battle, given their very similar training and technique, is experience, strength, and mind. Oliver has been fighting criminals and mercenaries for a solid 10 years, if you count his training time and his time back in his city. He's also extremely fit. DCEU Batman has been fighting criminals for 20 years and literally lives at the gym. Simply put, Batman has twice as much experience as Arrow does and twice or even three times as muscle mass. And when you combine experience, training, and strength, you've got yourself one lethal combatant. Join my Patreon to get access to cool behind the scenes stuff and a bunch of other rewards. Subscribe and you can follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and brand new Facebook fan page, Godzilla Rex. See you next time.